Hello and welcome back to the channel. It has been so long since I made a video. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Now, I just want to preface this video by saying that if you are not familiar with my videos and you think that this is a tutorial on how to get your free NAS box up and running, this is not the video for you. Just look down at the how long this video is. Yeah, that, that, that is totally correct. And no, it is not actually that hard to get FreeNAS up and running. There are some great tutorials that go through all of your configuration of how to get your box up and running. This is a very rambly video, and I go on about how I'm upgrading my FreeNAS box from my current, like, or not my current anymore, but what was previously my current, just throwing the other thing with spare parts into something that is actually good. Ish. If, unless you're going to roast me for using blue drives, but anyway, uh, that th this video is not a tutorial. This is just nerdy entertainment. There's no other way to put it. You, if you are looking for a tutorial, this is not for you. Not only is it long, but I actually don't really even go into detail about setting it up. I talk mainly about putting the drives in my computer, swapping everything over, and my personal, what's going on with my personal setup. Not anything generalized for you. Like I said, this is more nerdy entertainment than an actual video. So look for another video. But if you're still here and you want some nice, fun, rambly, laid back entertainment, here you go. This video is not at all professional. My goodness, there are a million different microphones. It's audio level is all over the place. I did my best, but oh man, this is a long one. It takes the, this video takes place over the course of three months. So with that said, strap in, this is a long one, get yourself a drink, relax, and enjoy. Oh, did I mention that everything goes wrong in this video? Ah. Hello, welcome back to yet another video and yet another project. I know it's been so long since I've released another video. I don't know if I'm going to end up releasing something somewhere between the start of this video and the end of this video because we're gonna have to strap in here because this is going to be a pretty long project. I am finally going to be redoing my file server, which is something I really need to do because I have no storage anywhere. But I have got four crispy four terabyte hard drives in the house in a box behind me. And we are going to be getting this thing here all fixed up. In this video, we're going to be putting the new NAS together we're going to be replacing the battery in my UPS. This is not my UPS, this is a little tiny thing. That's just a little power strip. But we're gonna be replacing the battery in my UPS because it won't run the server for more than about a minute and a half in its current state. But that battery is still gonna be being put to use because I've got another UPS that I'm going to put the battery in and it's gonna run my wireless router and my um, network modem that's on the other floor and it should be able to run that for probably like a half hour even on that battery but I, I should have had the server shutting down while I was rambling on so it should be shutting down there it goes I really should have done that first because it takes a minute but uh the first thing that we're going to do is uh as far as we're going to try and transplant the drives from this into another computer because um, we aren't building a new file server per se we're just going to upgrade some stuff in here clean it out because we're going to use the same base system this system has been rock solid stable as well I don't want to jinx it but it has been it has been rock solid stable I haven't had a problem with it even with the uh, uh, old hard drives that's in here and I, I've been running the system for almost two years in its current state probably more around a year. It's been running a long time in its current state with very little downtime. None of that downtime was really because of problems. It was just because of me turning it off because of cleaning or because I needed to steal the UPS for something or because the power went out or whatever. It's pretty much been rock solid. But uh, yeah, I'm going to let this thing finish shutting down and then I'm going to pull it out and uh, get the camera going on the inside of the thing. Okay, so here is the system. I am very interested to see what it looks like on the inside. But judging by the outside, I want to say it's fairly dusty. Looks like I didn't put the cover on correctly. This thing appears to be 
uh, regular HP, what does it say? Uh, P6220Y uh, machine, but it's not. Just about the only thing about this thing that is original is the um, case. Everything else pretty much has been replaced. It's got a different motherboard, same CPU, different power supply, and different hard drives. But let's uh, pop the thing open. Get the camera adjusted. This isn't going to be the most professional video. I apologize. You know, it's actually not quite as bad in here as I expected. Certainly getting dusty, though. So inside of here, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what we've got going on in here. We've got a Corsair CX600 uh, power supply. We've got two one terabyte WD greens. We've, these up here are two laptop drives. I think one of them is a Seagate 500 gig SSHD, and the other one is a 500 gig uh, WD blue. So none of these are NAS drives. And uh, we're not gonna be putting NAS drives in here either. I know it's gonna be a controversial decision, but I have got four four terabyte WD blue drives for a couple of reasons. First reason is because I haven't had any issues with these drives. Second reason, they still got a good warranty. Third reason, the drives aren't going to run 24-7. They're set up to spin down, so they're not going to run all the time. Fourth reason, they're way cheaper. Fifth reason, I'm going to use these drives as well as some of the other drives i got lying around to make another backup server. And I don't know if there's a sixth reason, but I can figure out. Basically, they're cheaper. I haven't had issues with these drives. They're not going to run 24-7, and I'm going to be putting together a backup server. So there's no reason to get NAS drives, in my opinion. Now, maybe it'll bite me in the butt, and you all can say I told you so, but I don't think I will need them. The uh, first thing that we need to do, though, is get our awful Torx driver, because out of HP, and take out these screws. Well, actually, the first thing I should probably do is unplug the uh, cables over here. So we'll get our power cables out of here. Oh yeah, on the motherboard is a Gigabyte GM LMT USB 3, if I'm not mistaken. Was that right? Oh, GM 78 LMT. That is the metal. So, you know, a very standard sort of AM3 motherboard. It's not the HP board. I replaced it with this board because I actually got it for free. And I figured it's probably more reliable than the HP board. And more importantly, the HP board doesn't have Gigabit Ethernet, and uh, this does. So we've got our two WD green drives right here. They are pretty warm. We've got two screws here, both are there. And now we are just left with the inside. So we've got 12 gigs of RAM inside of this thing. Um, I think I should have another stick. I could, another two gig stick, put 14 in here. But then my system in the basement would be down to two. So I don't know if I'd do that. But I really am actually going to be uh, very shortly getting um, two 16 gig sticks and, uh, or not two 16, two 8 gig sticks. So then I should have 26 gigs of RAM in here and I'll have six gigs in the computer in the basement. And that'll be all good. But anyway, that's not what this video is about, is it? No, it is not. So we've got all this mess. Let me unplug these drives as well. Oh man, I don't know. I don't remember how I've got this one. Into. It's just kind of. Oh, I do remember. There's a little thumb screw here. Just screw it in. One little screw through a hole here. So uh, let's get this drive out of here. Here is our 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue laptop drive. So we'll put this over here with these drives. And then in here, I need to flip over to a Phillips bit to get these screws out. Right here is a very, very, very thin uh, SSHD 500 gigs as well. I am amazed also, by the way, that this thing hasn't died under these conditions because 
this is definitely not a uh, drive you'd want to make. I mean, look how thin that thing is. This is not a drive to be thrown around. It's probably one platter in there, too, as well. This one's pretty thin, too, but nothing like that. But this is all that we're going to do with this system for now. Well, actually, we might need to steal a couple of SATA cables now that I think about it. So uh, I'm going to get these out. I'm also not going to use this ugly red one. I've got more. I want to match them just because that's how I roll. I want them to match. So we're going to take these guys out of here. We have this really tiny one here. Man, they're all mismatching this thing. So there we go. There are our SATA cables. So I'm going to bring in the other system. And uh, we need to do some stuff to it to hopefully be able to um, get these drives in here and see if we can boot the thing up and it just uh, work. I'm going to be attempting to transplant the drives into this uh, Dell Octoplex here. Now there's a couple of things that I need to do to this system. One of those is upgrade the RAM because as of now, this thing's only got two gigs in it. That is not enough for free NAS. I've got two two gig sticks, so we'll have four gigs in here. It's still not enough, but hopefully it'll be enough for this. I mean, it's only the pool's only 1.5 terabytes. It's not like it's a huge pool or anything. So we got those two sticks. Where's my two two gig sticks? I know I brought them over here. Where I put over oh, here? There. So we'll put these guys in here. I haven't tested these either, so I don't even know if they work. But let's hope they do, because otherwise I'll end up having to dig out a different system. Oh man, are these DDR3? Ooh, whoops. Apparently these are DDR3. Wait a minute. These are DDR3. That's actually kind of a good thing. Yeah, these are definitely DDR3. Okay, well, apparently these are DDR3 memory modules. Well, let me, I'll be right back, because I know I've got some DDR2 that I can put in here and just steal from another system. You know, whenever I was thinking about uh, the way those memory modules were, I was kind of thinking, man, these are some dense uh, DDR2 sticks. There's only memory chips on one side. That's kind of odd for a 2 gig stick. It's like the biggest stick of DDR2 you can get. Well, the fact that it's DDR3 explains a lot, because that is far from a big stick when it comes to the DDR3. That's like the smallest sticks they really did. This other one will go in here. Alright, so now we need to remove these drives, or this one drive. This is a 160 gig drive. Uh, this thing's from like 05. This thing's old. It's still going as far as I know. I hope it's still going. But this computer is what I'm using, hopefully, for an arcade cabinet project that I'm wanting to do soon. So uh, that drive has an install of Windows 7, as well as an arcade front end and a ton of arcade games. And that's what this system is used for. Really, it's used for nothing, but it is what it's being used for right now. So I need to uh, get my Torx driver back so I can get these drives out. These are both two terabyte Western Digital Green drives, and at least one of them I feel like is about to fail because one of them I feel like was about to fail to begin with. I took it out of a uh, computer that uh, the drive is dying on, and it's been running in here for years somehow. Can't believe it hasn't died yet. But these are pretty much identical drives. One of them was made in December of 2009. Oh man, these drives are only four days apart. One was made on the 14th of December 2009, and the other one, or six days apart, was made on the 20th of December 2009. So these drives are like almost identical. That's pretty cool. So these guys need to go into here. So I'm actually just going to properly, I'll go ahead and properly install them because why not?
Okay, so this guy will go in here. And now maybe I won't properly install it just because this is kind of jerry-rigged up to use a two and a half inch drive with zip ties. But you know what? I might not have to undo any of that stuff in order to get it to fit in here. No, it turns out I won't, I don't think. No, we'll be okay. No, I lie, we won't. So it looks like this drive is just kind of going to have to sit. Oh, but that's not going to work. Hmm. I guess I'll just get rid of this thing. Ah, got it. Alright, let's try this again. Now, one of these guys is actually messed up, so I might have to try and fix that. Okay, so that drive is now in the computer. Now it's time for... Uh, a SATA cable. Where'd they all go? I had a pile of them right here, I thought, that came out of the auger there. So I need one of these long ones. This should reach. It looks like it will. Plug it in here. And this guy needs to go over... Where does it need to go? It needs to go over here. So that needs to go here. And then we've got some spots here. I really shouldn't be sitting these on carpet, but you know, I live dangerously. I really am living dangerously right now because if I lose one of these more, than, if I lose more than one of these drives messing around with them, I'm gonna be in trouble. But um, I don't want to sit these on top of metal and operate them, so I need uh, I need to put them on top of something. I don't, let me let me find like a. I know I've got some set cases in here. Yeah, perfect. So Yeah, we'll put them on top of these things. Yeah, perfect. So this drive can go here. So, I've got a brand new pack of cables here. Let's get this guy opened up. So we've got one regular and one right angle. So it looks like we're going to plug the regular one into here probably. That'd be easiest. Cool. And then we need to plug this into here. Move some stuff around so it'll actually plug in. Perfect. And now I want to remove these cards. I want to take out this graphics card. And I definitely want to take out this wireless card. And now this system actually has gigabit ethernet, so fingers crossed the transfer won't be too terribly slow on it. And I don't think I'm going to bother with uh, closing up the side panel either. Um, I need to put these screws somewhere safe because I'm going to probably end up using them again, at least some of them. Put them here. And I think the only other thing to do is to uh, plug this thing in and see if it works. Alright, I've got a monitor hooked up, got a keyboard hooked up, I've got all four hard drives plugged in, I've got the USB with FreeNAS on it in the back. So uh, let's hope that it just is great. Oh, and I got it connected to the network if I didn't mention that. So let's press the power button. And I know I need to get into the setup for starters because this computer is old and doesn't automatically detect when you have drives plugged in. And this monitor is old and has a short in the cord. So I kind of got to get it at the right angle for it to not be pink. All right. So I need to go over here to drives. SATA 1 needs to be on. All these SATAs need to be on. All 
on, 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 and on. So all these thetas are on. All right, and then we need to go to boot sequence and USB drive is up there. That's USB device. That's Let's just bring USB device up. U. All right. And then we'll go to exit. We're going to go accept uh, escape, save and exit. So fingers crossed, it is going to boot up in the free NAS. It's going to detect all the drives and it's just going to work. That's, that, that, that's the plan here. So we got blinky cursor. The light on the USB is flashing. Oh, yep. There goes free NAS. So I'm really hoping that this guy is just going to work. So we're looking good so far. And once this guy gets up on the network and is the uh, old server, in quote marks, even though the old server is really back here, we can start building the true new server. And we should just be able to copy all the data from here over to there over the network without any problems or having to move data to other places or anything like that. And that would be absolutely fantastic. So it's getting everything all good. It's 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 it'll take a minute to boot. It always does. All right, I'll I'll be back whenever it's booted up all the way. And if it does, I hope it does, because if that's the case, then my ideas in my head will have gone exactly how I want them to. Oh wait, no, this is going to be important. Trying to mount root ZFS. It's 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 gonna let's see if it gets the pool. I think this is where we need to be. It's got all the drives listed. WDC, ST, it's all cut off, it's not big enough. So we've got a WDC, these are the two 500 gig drives. These are the two 500, so there's a 500 gig, 500 gig, one terabyte, and I'm assuming the other one terabyte's above there somewhere. It's trying to mount, let's see if it mounts. Link state up. This is for the uh, Ethernet. All right, I'll, I'll be back whenever something changes. Okay, so far I have not had a ton of luck getting this guy to show up on the network. Now, judging by the console and the text on the screen, it appears to be mounting the. Uh, volume just fine but it just won't connect to the network i've tried uh if i can move this out see if i can not adjust the camera too much to explain what i want this right here is a usb adapter i tried that it wouldn't get a link with that it wouldn't with the one built in so i think the next thing i'm going to do is try something that i know for a fact works and that is where to go this pci gigabit ethernet adapter. Now I know this works fine with FreeNAS because I used it with FreeNAS for quite some time. Before I changed out the motherboard in that system I was using the original HP board and I had this lying around so I used this because the board built in only has 10 100 ethernet and obviously I don't really want that in a file server because it was just very slow. So all I can think to do is I want to attempt to uh, plug this guy in There we go. So this guy's now in. I'm going to close up the little thingy. I'm going to unplug that thing. I'm going to plug this in. And let's just try and power the thing back up and see what we get. If this doesn't work, I think unfortunately I'm going to have to go to plan B, which I really did not want to do. But I think it's what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately. But we'll see. If this doesn't work, that is what I want to do because I don't want to turn these drives on more than and off more than I have to, just because you know they're old and <laughs> the data on these drives don't have a backup, which I know is probably scary to most of you, considering you saw what the drives are and the fact they're running 24/7 in a free NAS box. 
being that two of them are laptop drives and one of them is uh, I thought to be dead beginning. One of those green drives I personally would not say I would have a problem running in a uh, more sort of mission critical op operation. But those other three drives I don't trust. That one drive I would trust. The others I probably would not. I might trust that Western Digital Blue drive a little bit. I don't know that I'd trust the Seagate drive just because it's not designed to do really anything. Yeah, but anyway, so. The thing does have a link. Uh, 10 100 link at this moment in time, but it should go green. So we're going to let this thing boot and I'll see if it gives a network address. And if it does, I'll put together the new system. If it does not, we're going to have to put the old system back together. Something I am not looking forward to doing. And an exciting new development. Ignore those errors about my UPS not being connected. That's fine. But look at that. We got an IP. So I'm going to just... Uh, take the camera off the tripod, do some very high quality camera work, and man, look at that, it's already there. Didn't even have to refresh Explorer or anything. There are all the files. They all show up, they all work. Let's uh, go to that um, address, 86.48. and see uh, what kind of load it's under. Oh my goodness. I really do apologize for this camera work. Okay, so it is showing that uh, network interface, but it wouldn't actually do anything. This network interface does appear to be working just fine. I don't know why there's so many reflections on the screen, but uh, there's 1.7 gigs of memory free, and the CPU doesn't have a load on it of hardly anything. So you know what? This thing might actually not be doing too bad. The uh, VDEV does show up. So you know what that means? It means we can put together the new file server. Okay, I have swapped my camera batteries and grabbed some goodies that I will need, such as some SATA cables. I grabbed a PC speaker I had lying around because this board doesn't have one built in, I realized, and kind of would like to have one in my thing I use for server tasks. Just, just because I like knowing that if something goes horribly wrong with the thing, like it's overheating, it'll start beeping at me, so I can go ahead and turn it off. Um, another thing is I've got a computer, I've got um, another 2 gig stick of memory, I believe. That'll bring this guy up to 14 gigs of RAM in the form of one 8 gig stick and two 4 gigs or two two gig sticks yeah 14 gigs of RAM so I'm gonna shove this in here so we should be gold in there um, and I really need to clean the thing if I'm being honest I really do so I guess we're gonna clean the thing out as well most of the dust came off of there without really much of a problem at all. I just kind of, it was all caked on, so I just kind of wiped it off in my hands and put it in the uh, trash. But now I think it's time to unbox our hard drives and talk about how I think Amazon did a really awful job packaging these things up. Let me show you what I mean. The drives came in an Amazon box, as you would expect, considering I ordered them from Amazon. You open up the Amazon box, which the tripods can conveniently do. They shook around like crazy when I picked them up. They just threw this little piece of plastic air foam, and they got the four hard drives in their boxes. Now, I did actually uh, pop one of these open so far and just have a little peek. I never even broke the empty static bag. I just had a look inside because I wanted to see. But we've got our four four terabyte hard drives here. And I'm just going to turn this box upside down so that we can kind of use it as a uh, table, a little bit of an anti-static table. So where's the one I opened up already? Here it is. So there you go. It's a usual sort of hard drive box. Comes in a box. Comes in a bag. If you've ever got a hard drive, this is nothing new. Um, and then this 
bag, I think should just hopefully. I'll have to go grab my scissors. All right, so get our drive out of its little bag prison here. Don't forget the snack it comes with. So we got our drive number one. Which I need to, uh, I need to take pictures of all of these as well, so that I, uh, have them for a warranty. I'm just, so we'll just shove this over here. Close the box, and now it's time to do that a couple, or three more times, actually. I'm obviously going to save these boxes for, uh, oh, I just noticed these boxes have the serial number of the drives on them. That's nice. Okay, that'll make things easy for me. There we go. That is what 16 terabytes looks like. It looks like these are all manufactured on July the 7th. Yes, they are. So these drives seem to have come like one after another off the production line, which is pretty cool. So there we go. Now, uh, I guess it's time to start installing them in the computer. So wherever its drive cage went, I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Two of these drives are going to go inside of here, so we can get going with that. Alright, so now here's this cage of drives, which was, you know, obviously very easy to figure out where these go. Now for where the other drives in the system are going to go is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Because there's uh, technically, I guess this case has space for three hard drives, but the fourth one will be a little bit trying to figure out where it needs to go. So I think our fifth hard drive is probably going to go down in here where you cannot see hardly at all. But let's see if it just easily slides in. There we go. label it as HDD, but the screws don't line up. Well, I guess it's going to go in like that, so uh, we'll get a screw in here. Okay, that's, that's not going anywhere. Now it's going to be getting that other drive in here that's going to be a little bit more tricky. I'm going to turn the camera off for this one. All right, I've got all the drives in. I've got my SSD in there that we're gonna install FreeNAS on. No more flash drive in this setup, by the way. We're gonna do it the recommended way, and that is use a uh, thumb drive, or I mean an SSD. Technically, a thumb drive is actually supported, but it's not recommended. Now, if I boot this thing up, I'm actually expecting it to boot in a Windows 7. I wanna get into the BIOS, though. Drives all sound very quiet. Is it gonna let me in the BIOS? What's going on here? There we go, that was weird. Uh, why does the thing keep uh, rebooting? Is it gonna boot into Windows 7?
Why is the system in a boot loop? I can tell you right now that I do not like this. Alright, well. Right now I'm just going to shut it down. And I'm going to uh, unplug all these drives. It is possible that uh, it's because the board in this thing is uh, not UEFI. Maybe it doesn't like those hard drives, but it's my understanding that uh, as long as you're not booting from them, it's okay. So let's uh, get into the BIOS again. Okay, it's still shutting off. Let me try and take out that piece of, uh, that stick of memory I added. Because that's the only other thing I've changed about the system. I haven't done anything else to it. that stick in memory. Let's try a different stick and see if it's happy with that. Alright, let's try this again. this cable here. Let's just go to standard CMOS features. Let's see if it'll... Yeah, there we go. 14 gigs. frame buffer to 128 megs. Yeah, all right, I think that we're uh, okay now. So let's just uh, let's just get out of here and shut the thing off again and uh, plug those drives back in because it seems that stick of memory it just doesn't like that stick of memory. So now if we let it go, let's see if it starts booting in Windows 7, which it does. All right, so let me uh, cut power and plug those drives back in. All right, drives are plugged in again. Let's get this here and let me uh, turn it on. Because I really want to go into Windows 7 that's on that SSD. And... Uh, check out the drives there before we get free nest going. So it showed them all there. All right, it's just not gonna wanna do Windows because of the uh, drive. So let's just go into the uh, BIOS because I do wanna check out the drives in there if it'll let me. So if we go into standard CMOS features, that's just showing ID. Um, is it in here? Let's just go F10. Save and exit. I'm going to throw this drive in here. I forget what key I press for the boot menu. F12. All right. 
right, so we are going to boot from USB HDD. And it should boot from my uh, FreeNAS install disk. You've got to be kidding me. There's, oh, you have got to be kidding me. I don't have time for kernel panics. <sighs> I really don't want to be shutting these drives down a million times either. Okay, so I used a different thumb drive. I was using this dreadfully awful PNY flash drive. It's like the worst thing ever. It's terrible in every way. And it didn't want to work. So I tried that, it just works immediately. So here we are, we're in the setup. So let's just go this. I unplugged all the other drives because I don't want them shutting up and down. Uh, select one or more drives where FreeNAS should be installed. Select a drive with the spacebar. So we want it on that solid state disk. Uh, this will um, this will erase all the data you can't use for sharing data. Installing a flash media is preferred. Yes. Yep. Yes. Now we need our root password. All right. Okay. Um, BIOS mode is recommended for legacy. Uh, we're going to boot via BIOS, because that's all this has. Create 16 gig swap partition. Yeah, sure. So now we should be installing, I think. I haven't refreshed my memory on how the installation of this thing works, to be fair. I don't remember. So the light on the thumb drive is not flashing at all. The hard drive activity light is not flashing at all. The system is not frozen though. Oh, it's working. Kind of. I don't know those things that's talking big dry timeout stuff. You never know though, because FreeNAS seems to always just throw all sorts of errors at you that read as errors and then the thing boots up and works fine and never fails to work fine. One positive thing is that this guy is still up on the network and chugging away, which is good. It might need to be doing that for a couple more days, really. Um, it's showing more timeouts again. Let's retry. Hello, so now an insane amount has, of time has passed between this clip and the last clip. The last clip was that you just saw of me struggling to get FreeNAS installed was installed on September the 12th and it is currently November the 28th, one day before the day I officially become an adult actually. But my goodness so it, it didn't you might be thinking that because that much time has passed that it took that much time to get the system running stably well not, thankfully that's not true if that was not true I would probably be incredibly angry the system has actually been very stable the past month and a half two months or so um, I have had very few problems no hardware problems I had some weird uh, issues with permissions uh, and not being able to execute files from the shared uh, folder but other than that n nothing really to speak of besides that which I have I think hopefully have got that all figured out that's just simply you know me forgetting how FreeNAS works you know I set it up initially like two years ago and haven't touched it since I've just updated it occasionally and used it I mean that's about it but uh what ended up being the issue was indeed uh, memory uh, the th way that I ended up getting around that is I just simply, uh, I had the 8 gig stick and the 2 gig stick in one pair on the memory, 
on the board, so you know it's every other stick. I'll put a picture, but uh, like every other stick is, it's every other stick, and you're supposed to put like pairs with the colors. So you know that's what I did. I put the one eight gig stick in one color, and the one mismatched two gig stick in another, and then I put the two two gig sticks that were the same together. And theoretically, if you had uh, correct memory sticks that would be running in quad channel or if you had two similar and only two would be in dual channel. However, because I had two mismatched sticks and then two matching sticks, it, it didn't like that. What I actually needed to do was put make everything mismatched. So the eight gig stick and one of the two like two gig sticks in one pair and then the two mismatched two gig sticks in another pair. And that seems to have gotten rid of all of these stability issues. And to me, being that this is a file server, and the way that uh, FreeNAS and the Z file system work, having more RAM is a lot more important than having a fast RAM. So the fact that I've got 14 gigs in single channel mode is uh, is not a problem. That's that's much better. Um, so yeah, the system's been running great. Uh, the video I have been editing, I've actually been editing the video off of the file server. I haven't noticed a single slowdown. Everything's been smooth as butter, running directly from the uh, file server, which is absolutely excellent. Uh, write speeds are kind of, you know, not as great as I would love them to be, but they're still totally acceptable. And then read, see, read speeds, the uh, bottleneck is the gigabit Ethernet connection. So I'm not having any problems with uh, reading from the server, which is great. So I think the only other thing I want to do to close out this video is I'm going to uh, bring you on over to the computer and I'm going to show you exactly what I've got going on uh, configuration wise. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is just show you the uh, configuration that I got going. So here is what it looks like. So you can, you can see what I was talking about RAM wise that uh, we've got uh, 0 0.13 gigs free here which is, you know, not an absolutely insane amount out of the 14 gigs. It actually would, it would not be at all harm for the system to have more RAM. Uh, basic, do I have any virtual machines running? No, I don't. So this is without any virtual machines running or anything like that, which is something that I do uh, plan to start using. I, I want to set up HomeBridge for all of my smart home stuff. Also expect a video on smart home and my smart home setup. That's something that I've been meaning to do but haven't, and very well may be something I uh, get on with doing if, um, you know, I keep, I'm still out of school, because, uh, yeah, anyway, I had been in school, but now I'm out of school again, but anyway, that's not what this video is about, this video is about my file server, so you can see we've got the AMD Phenom 2 X4 processor, this is a 4 core CPU, it runs really well in this file server, actually, it, it's old, and, uh, it's it it doesn't cost very much uh there we go this thing 20 to 20 bu 20 to 30 bucks for that cpu uh, it's you know very cheap getting old over 10 years maybe not quite 10 years but it's an older chip that's for sure but uh i guess what i really need to just show is you know i've got my user I've got my uh, group under admin. Uh, the system is very, very simple. If we pop into storage, you can see that we have got a uh, media data set. And I actually configured this wrong, which is a lot of what was giving me uh, permissions problems in the beginning. I really should have a Kyle folder, but instead I just have a folder within storage. If you don't know how FreeNAS works, it's confusing, and I really don't know how FreeNAS works, but I hobble my way through it, so there's that. Um, and then we've got our two uh, Z volumes for uh, our two virtual machines. I have a Home Assistant virtual machine as well as an Ubuntu uh, Mate or Mate or however you're pronounce that, supposed to pronounce that virtual machine. Um, if we go into services, I've got, or not services, plugins, jails. Jails, that's what I want. We can see that we've got our Plex jail, and uh, that is running the Plex plugin. And all oh right, that is where I wanted to be. So we've got a uh, Plex setup, which is what the uh, media share is for. So if we go in into sharing and we go into our Windows shares, we have Kyle and media setup. 
Now, I normally would have an AFP uh, share set up. Don't know why I don't. I never bothered setting it up because honestly, uh, SMB file sharing works fine on Mac OS and I just haven't really bothered setting it up because I'm lazy. But you can see I've got my two shares. I've got my Kyle share, which is my personal share, and my media share. And if we have a look here at this PC, you can actually see that we have got a one terabyte share here and then this 10.2 terabyte share here. Now this is actually something that uh, I thought was pretty cool. It's been something I was trying to figure out how to do before on my old server to set up a share for my sister actually, but never really did. But if you go into pools and when you make a new, uh, uh, a new data set, which is what you should do for all of your new users, you can actually edit the options of the data set and you can set up a quota here. So in this case, I just set up one terabyte, not really because it needs to, but because I just wanted to. So I could say set up a 500 gigabyte uh, share for my sister and she can have that. Now with that being said, the way because my share is set up how it is, uh, I could actually use um, this 10.2 terabytes is actually the entire uh, volume and this one terabyte Basically what I'm trying to say is is that this one terabyte here will cut in. So if I add uh, 100 gigs of stuff here, I will have 8.59 terabytes free here. Just because of how it's set up and how it's not set up, you know, exactly how it should be. But everything does work. Like I can, all of my, all of my issues I think I fixed. For example, I can go into my benchmark tools here and I can run, oh, we can run... CPU-Z straight off the file server without any issues. So there we go. Another thing I figured I, I guess I should mention is this is my Premiere project. We can scrub through. We don't have problems scrubbing. Let's just go all the way out here. Um, let's just get this up here so you can see the networking and everything else. So here is our networking. You can see that the file server definitely is probably the bottleneck for the quote unquote sluggish performance we're getting here, but it's more than usable. Like for example, I just click here, play, it plays, click here, play. So editing performance right off the file server is uh, very good. No, no complaints there. But by far the best part about this is that I have got all of this space here. And hopefully it will be a little bit before I fill this up. Because up until I built this, all the, these drives up here that are red, this this was red too, and I really need to go through some of my files, but I, I've, it, it's probably going to take me a minute to fill all that up. 10 terabytes is a lot. So, thanks for watching. If you made it through this whole video, this whole, how long is this? This whole going to be probably 50 minute video at the end. You really are, you're a real one, and I really appreciate it. We've got some long stuff coming. We've got some short stuff coming. Uh, I might even make a condensed version of this. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.